thank you. We give you praise. Because, Lord, it is your mercy and your faithfulness that has brought us thus far. And, Lord, we are trusting you as we open up our lives that this year, God, we cannot do anything outside you. Amen. We are zero without you. We ask, O oh God, that our expectation this year will bring it to manifestation. Amen. That your faithfulness will reach out unto every one of us. Amen. We shall be parted positive. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's, let's have a seat. In our Bible reading this morning, we have read from Isaiah chapter 41. And of course, the summary of what that part of the place we read is telling us is to show us the awesomeness of God, the greatness of God. That when God speaks, the island, the island nations silence or are free before him. And that God is not finished with us yet. And he has promised us that we should not be afraid and we should not be dismayed. For I am your God. What a wonderful thing for somebody to know that God is his God. Now you see some people are worshipping God that is Abba. They are talking to God that they do not know. God is in heaven, but God is with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you are looking, I I was listening to the later younger show, and he said a woman came to him. And this woman was a Buddhist before she got converted coming to church. But as a matter of fact, that in Buddha, you know, the, I mean, uh, the, Buddhist, uh, the Buddha religion or the Buddhist, now there is a physical image of Buddha that is in the temple that people go forward to be requested. But this woman now got converted. And now was asking Pastor Show and said, Pastor, since I've been coming to church, I have not met this Jesus. Show me the address of Jesus. I want to go and meet Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Young Show said he did not know how to answer the woman. And told the woman and said, Give me one week. I will tell you the address of Jesus. So after one week, the following Sunday, the woman came and said, Yes, I am here. This Jesus I want to know is address. And um, before that time, the witcher said, he was praying and said, What do I tell this woman? Eventually, the Lord told me the show and said, Address my address is your address. Praise God. Hallelujah. And the Bible says Christ is in God and God is in me. Is that awesome? Are you following me? Yes, sir. That is the scripture. So he was now able to know that the address of God is your address. So when the woman came and said, yes, now to the, the, the woman the scripture, and the woman said, Are you kidding me? But revelation came, and the man said, Yeah. So, Pastor told him her and said, Where your address is, that is where the address of God is. Why? Because God is in us, Emmanuel. God is what? He's with us. So, in other words, we are not serving God that is afar. We are serving God that is in us. 
and also with us. So, when you are praying, you should pray to God that is man, not God that is a father. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. The Bible says we are made to sit with Christ where? In heavenly places. Far above principalities and powers. And that's why faith is very crucial in our work with God. You must agree with the Bible before you see the revelation behind it. Some people want to see before they believe. Things of the spirit does not work like that. I hope you understand. That is not Christianity. Other religions, sin is believing. Alright? Sin is believing. But in the Christian faith, it's the other way around. Believing is what? Is sin. So it is only when you exercise faith in the word of God that you are going to see the manifestation of the word of God. Shout hallelujah. So God said he will help us. I'm still talking on multiple increase, which is our watchword for this year. And the God Genesis 26 tells us that, verse 12 to 13, that Isaac saw in the land. And I was glad that the person who preached in the Yoruba church I will hear that emphasis this morning that he was talking about if you don't sow, you cannot harvest. The importance of sowing before you harvest. Um, that's good that we are still on the same page even for the people in the Yoruba church. In that Genesis 26 verse 12 say then Isaac sowed in the land and received in the same year a hundredfold and the Lord blessed him and the man was great and went forward and grew until he became very great that is the definition of multiple increase he says he sowed in the land and he had an hundredfold. You know what it means to have a hundredfold? The Bible does not play with words. The man actually saw, and he saw the hand of Jehovah, that you have an hundredfold. Like I said last week, that it is something for a student to score hundred percent. One hundred over one hundred. Especially you can score it with this mathematics. Am I right? In mathematics, it is a matter of uh, principle. You know the principle, you know the theory, you can do one, but it may be difficult to score 100% in English. Praise God. But the teacher can still say the verb and the adjective did not agree with each other at the point. But in mathematics, in calculation, you can score 100%. But the point there is that no matter how bright, brilliant a student is, he cannot score one and ten percent. Praise God. Hallelujah. He can only score one hundred percent. Even if the other students did not do well and the teacher wants to give marks across board, five five marks, the one that's four hundred, there is nothing to hard to beat because it is not in a mathematical expression to say one and ten percent. So everything is judged by the percentage. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But it's only God that can give more than 100 percent That is the multiple God. So God does not go by our own mathematics. Does not go by our own figures. He said the man had an hundredfold, but he did not stop there. He said, he said, and the Lord blessed him. Praise God. Hallelujah. And the Lord blessed him. After he had a hundredfold, the blessings increased. And the Bible said, and the man was great and went forward. Can you see now the projection? He was blessed. Then he went, I mean, he became great. Hallelujah. He became great. Then, not that alone, he went forward. He was still keep on moving in that direction of that, you know, greatness, increase. The Bible says, went forward and grew until he became very great. Very great. You can see, that's an expression of multiple increase that is beyond mathematical or human expression. Shout hallelujah. It is only God that can do that. I've heard a story of um, 
uh, the story of the man who started the oats business, the Quaker oats. Praise God. Read about the story that the man, he was a farmer, but at a particular time, God wanted to bless him. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. God wanted to bless him. He was doing well, he was faithful. I mean, he was doing well in the business. That he got to that old, I mean, he got to the field one day where he did not plant oat cream up there. Praise God. Hallelujah. You have never seen things like that, you will see this one. Amen. That where you did not plant, you begin to harvest. Amen. I'm not saying we should not sow. I'm saying that God is now taking you to multiple increase. Amen. You have been faithful to the extent that God now begins to undertake for you. Amen. Things that are surprising. Things that will cause it all. Because an awesome God, God begins to do it beyond your imagination. The Bible says God can do much more than what we ask at his multiple acres. He can do much more than what we ask, than what we think. Do you see that? That God can do? Now, you are limited in your thinking. You are limited in your calculation. You are limited in terms with your investment strategy. But God can do much more than the level of your idea. The level of your thoughts, the level of your thinking. Because when God chooses to bless the man, he will bless that man. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless Abraham. I would say that God bless Abraham. And now God says, Stop. The blessing that I'm blessing you is beyond you. And through you, the whole family of the earth shall be blessed. That's a blessing that transcends an individual. It is only God that can do that. So this year I'm looking forward as your pastor to see a dimension of your blessings. Amen. The blessing that is beyond human's imagination. I always say it, if it is like others, then there is nothing special there. If you want to collect salary, the unbelievers also collect salary. There is no special there. Hallelujah. If they do this and you are doing the same thing, then it's nothing special. Okay? Difference is different from similarity. They say something is different, have you? Something is similar. If it is similar, there is nothing special in similarity. They look alike. But when it is different, which means that one is outstanding, alright? One stands out, is different from the other. And of course, the Bible says that God is going to make a demarcation. Those who are serving Him. That is what we read in that place that God told Israel, relax. You have been cheated for a very long time. You have been abused for a very long time. But this time around, I am going to help you. I am going to help you. I am going to bless you. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So I see somebody they call this morning that this year God is going to bless you. Amen. Even as a church, God is going to bless us. Amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah. We had wonderful time of wedding last year. Don't worry. The bear, wedding bears will begin to sound again. Amen. Amen. Because God will say to everybody this year. Amen. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And I tell you that between now and uh, uh, and maybe at least we are going to have three. Yeah. Let's go. Don't worry. I keep the details to myself. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't begin to formulate theory. You need know your God and you'll be established. You need your prophets. And you are going to what? Just believe me. Praise God. But there are things I know that you do not do. Is that also? Yes. Uh -huh. You know there is wedding coming up on the fifth. Amen. I'll talk about that after this service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But there are surprises. There are settlements. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are some awesome projects going on on that ground that we are going to open up this year. Amen. The Lord will do it. Amen. Because that is my prayer that God in this church is a family church. We celebrate ourselves. If somebody is celebrating something, the other person also has a right to celebrate this thing. Now, how? That is, we talked about prayer this day that we should pray for ourselves. If somebody is rejoicing, rejoice with that person. Alright? Rejoice with those who rejoice. Celebrate people. Learn to celebrate good things this year. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So, multiple angels. Psalm 85 verse 12, I read that last week because it said, Yea, the Lord shall give that which is good. And our land shall yield and you say, God will give that which is good. The Lord shall increase you more and more. Amen. You and your children. That is Psalm 115 verse 14. Now, I started, I said, what are the steps to experience all land multiplication? I said, number one is spiritual seeding. That you must sow to your spiritual life. Hosea 10 to 10 to verse 12 says, Sow to yourselves in righteousness, so that you can reap in what? In mercy. You should sow righteousness. Sow that which is good. So that you will be able to reap mercy from the Lord. In your spiritual life this year, don't fumble. If you are not born again, give your heart to Christ. If you are born again, stand firm in the faith. Stand firm in the faith. If you are still one leg in, one leg out, bring all the legs inside into the kingdom. It pays to serve Jesus. It's good to serve Jesus. And of course, we know that the hand is even drawing closer every day. Things are happening. And that's why we need to stay in the boat or in the ship. We should be part of the fellowship. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And continue to move forward to grow in that direction. Say amen. amen. And I said righteousness also has to do with right shots. Doing what is right. Giving people equity. Alright? Giving people helping hands. Doing that which is right. It doesn't matter how persecuted you are. I posted something on our platform. How many of you are even on this platform? Our Redemptive Family Church platform. If you are not there, see Pastor Paul that can get your name and put you there. I saw a story, you know, and I said, this is the story. And the, the, the man happened to be a policeman. He's a policeman for 35 years. Because he refused to compromise his time. He was being posted from one village, one bush to the other, back posting here and there. He will never read the posting, he will never bribe anybody because his name is that he doesn't take, he doesn't give. He doesn't take, he doesn't have the claim they gave to him among the Christians. You know? And he worked for 35 years. He has no plot of land, thoughtless of building a house. He spent all the, I mean, but he kept on faithful. He has four children. He managed to send them to school. His wife, the police wife, uh, uh, you know, is a petty trader. Continue to do that, just manage. And you know that, you see, no matter how you cost this men, some people cannot be cost. Yes, Praise God. Now, because he is a Christian and he has a relationship with God. So they gave him bad posting that you know the police is saying bad posting. We are nothing for nothing. Not, I mean, something that is even deep. If you are, do you know that if they post you to governor's office, I know somebody was posted to the governor's office, they have some, some uh, Allowance. allowances, some uh, things coming from the governor's house. Yes, sir. They give to them. If you are, like, if you are posted to, uh, you know, some beautiful places that it's not part of bribe now. So when it was seven months to his retirement, he was now posted to the headquarters, first headquarters. Uh, they call it standby, standby posted. That is standby, if there is anything, uh, go, they go there, go there, you know? Now, hallelujah, just like the final errand, he just felt that they have used the better part of his life. So he can be there for standby, you know, at the first headquarters that he was never allowed you know, to get to in Abuja. But it was a time of um, Obasanjo's president, and it was at the time of Erufai as the minister 
of the federal capital territory. Then, so the minister requested the mother to be doing demolitions for the Abuja master plan, the way we call it then. And that, then they now sent to the police force uh, headquarters that they need some police, police men, you know, to follow the people that will be demolition. You understand that? Now, we just felt that this good for nothing person should lead the team. At least you just need to lead them. So we call them a holy need praise God. Now, he has to. He was sent there. He went to Christian. But when he got there, his own Christian life, character, doing what is right, make sure that the assignment is carried out, giving protection to those who are to do the job they want to do. But somehow, everybody took notice of him. And then the guy called him one day and said, My friend. Everybody started calling him friend. And said, Come. Do you have do you have a car? And he said he has one old weekend Volvo that even to buy a battery, you have to push it. And because nobody to help you to push it. You know that is that children in the house, nobody to help you to push it. <laughs> yes, yeah. You know, so it's a spark somewhere there. And everybody just called one of the assistants. Key to a primary chief. Bring that key, give to him, take it. A primary chief. And one day you are walking again, and every guy was not going to find that he's a Christian. You know that he's a Christian. And now said that, come, do you have do you have a house? And the man I know you have land. Talk less of having a house. He just brought a document, maybe in Asokoro, a plot of land that worth not less than 100 million. He gave it to him. Seven months of retirement. This year, God will surprise you. Yeah. The years of your toiling, the years of your struggle, the years of labor, the Lord will reward you specially. Yeah. Yeah. And after that, you know, and, uh, and they said, okay, this man, it is yours. They gave him all the documents, perfect everything, and they now said that, but well, there is a duplex. A duplex quarters, you know, government something, and said, look, his wealth is punished, my friend. I gave it to you also. That's why he became the owner of a duplex and the owner of a lot of in the heart of a good Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And it was not getting, of course, day of blessing things that that is was getting good for the time. That along the line, along the line, every five wanted to travel out within that period. So I think they had to stop some things. No, they did not knock it out. The man who snubbed him or what do you call it? Who thought he's a good for nothing person, the ASB or whatever that posted him there. When he now saw the blessing that this man, and you know that the every first travel, he quickly now brought him back to the first headquarter and now sent his brother, who is in the police, to go and meet, you know, to go there. And now told the man said, You see, everything that you are given, you know, you are on the official duty. Both the, the vehicle you have to sell it, the cars, the, the house you sell it, you are official bit. And the man said, This thing was given to me by the minister. I said, No, the official bit, this and that, this and that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I mean, of course, if you are, he didn't answer him. Not long, everybody came back. I said, Where is my friend? He said, He's been transferred, he's been replaced. He was so mad and he called the IG straight. The federal general said, So, so, and so, so person, in my absence, he will be from the university. I want him to be replaced now. And IG said, I didn't know anything about it. He has to call. You know, it has become the Wala at the top. Praise God. To call the long story short, the, the, that's how he was replaced there. And he retired. Right? So, seven months that remained that he wanted to retire. Every five party for him I invited his friend in government and in business because it's not the friend of the minister. Praise God. And when they came, 
And everybody gave him 10 million. And the money cash started coming from different from, 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 from hand. Another friend, they gave him another property at the heart of Abuja that was not less than 200 million. Within seven months, God paid him in full. Hallelujah. The Bible says righteousness exalts a nation. Not only a nation, exalts people. So for sin is a reproach to them. So this year, you must take hope to God. As you keep on to time, you get to office early, you do your work, they say, look, you shall go shibu. No, you, it's work, work, work. If you say that work, you will die. You don't finish government work. And this and that, but you are there. They will go there, some they will bring a, a, a market to sell in the office. They will be doing market from one office to the other, selling all around. Now, but you, you are left to do the work and they say, look, you, look, you. Keep on holding on. The Bible says when we walk for anybody, don't see yourself working for that person first. See yourself working for who? For God. Whatever you do, do it as unto God. So God, look at past five years of struggle. For seven months, God paid him. How much will police, police, police would have paid him? What is his gratitude? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, if he has been cutting corners over the years, all right, how much all these corners that they are cutting, how much would he have been able to put together? How many of them that is a AIG, even the AIG that have land in the heart of Abuja? Are you getting my point? God is the one. But he will sow his seed. That's where I'm going. Righteousness. Say amen. amen. Then number two, kingdom seeding. Sow into the kingdom. I told you, I showed you uh, Matthew 20 verse 6 where the Lord was asking, I would say a man, a householder, he went out in the morning to hire people to the field and of course at another time, three, uh, uh, the three, uh, the third hour, the sixth hour, the seventh hour, but he kept on asking the question, why are you standing hiding? He said, nobody has asked to go to that far farm. I will pay what is due for him. But when he got to that verse, he said, at the eleventh hour, and I want to tell you, people of God, we are in the eleventh hour of the world. Jesus is coming very soon, everything will soon be over. Whatever you want to do for God, don't just be a person coming to church and just say, ah, I am counted, I came to you. He said, and about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others. I hope you are not part of that order. Standing idle and say it unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? In the kingdom, there is work to do. This is the new year in this church, this ministry. Now, praise God. This is just one part of what this ministry stands for. The Christian Information Network Ministry. Shout hallelujah. Praise God. We are, need, we are in need of hands. Our campus work now, we need to revive some things in our campus ministry. Now, what we need, young, vibrant youth that will go back. Interestingly, this ministry is 29 years old today. This ministry started the 9th of January, 1993. We are 29 years old today. There are a lot of works on ground that is calling for people to enroll to make themselves available. When I see those days, some of our part of our campus work, you know, having meeting, you know, our, our hope was I can praise God, you know, looking for president of fellowship, only meeting with them, plan for program, imparting them, and things like that. You know, the America third from UC, they will come from different places. Amen. Now you see. I've done that several years. 
I'm sure it's not right for me now to run and not being the president of fellowship. I want, I want to get away uh, that way. I mean, people that are younger than my children, brisk up. And I said, I want to sit down and, uh, you, you know, some of these uh, young people can be not, you know, they can tell you the president is free. They can tell you that uh, you have appointments before. But you need the young people who are also very close to that age. Is that answer? So in that territory for God is part of our work. Raising young people, imparting young people, and that is our joy. And many of them that still reach out. Praise God. Hallelujah. I say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, if it is what comes in from this church in Lowe that is running this ministry, we will have done bankrupt a long time. But God, so many people that this ministry has impacted, praise God. They may be in diaspora, they may, they may be in different places, and there are some of them that are committed. They know what God has done in their lives. So it's part of our trust. Mission, villages that we have invaded separately. This time around, who are the people that want to rise up? You know, to dig those old wells. And make themselves available to start, you know, to serve. People get drunk calling me now, some of the pastors' conference. We're going back this year now to some places, you know, that you have gone shaky, you know, not sure, you know, you know, a lot of places. For pastors' conference, now training people, training pastors in parting life. That is why it is called Christian Information What? Network. The revelation of the word of God, the truth God has given to us, continually dispensing into the lives of men. So many things are not that period. So 29 years, if I look back, we are not a failure. I understand what God called us into. And we have delivered, praise God. But you see, when you send people to the field, they do their bit, but when the 11th hour, why are you standing by? What can you do for us? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In the area of administration, in the area of technology, what can you do? What grace, what skill do you have? When do you intend to use it? When do you intend to make yourself available? Because when you seek towards the kingdom, is another way to sow, hallelujah, so that you also in your life and every aspect of your destiny, you can experience a multiple harvest or multiple increase. So why do you stand? Some people are saying, say, ah, no, I don't have time, I don't have time. Or you have time for other things, but you don't have time for God. Why don't you come for fellowship? I don't have time, I don't have time. Why don't you come for church? I don't have time. When do you want to have time? And the times of our life is passing gradually. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today you can walk, today you can run, you don't have time. You see why they have to carry you? Just like the parable of Jesus to Peter, you remember? He said, Peter, now you can go to wherever you want to go, but the time is coming. There are people who will carry you. And they will take you to where you really want to go. Shout hallelujah. And that is when you become aged. Hallelujah. Thank God for our old mommies that God is giving grace you know, to come to church. But see, the truth of the matter is that as they continue in age, they may not be able to attend church. Are you there, my friend? Yes, sir. And what we do for such people as a pastor is a responsibility. Many people like that that have, have been reached out to, you know, that will reach out to when either by the reason of sickness or the reason I take communion to their houses. Because they are still part of the church. You will go there, send people to encourage and you administer holy communion to them. That is church. Or when you can still carry yourself. What is your excuse? My house is far, but if it is your business, it's not far. If it is for cost of uh, I mean, your salary, it is not far. 
So this time around this year, don't stay idle. Ask yourself. You can come to me and say, Sir, what can we do in this church? Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. What can we do in this church? For example, in this ministry now, I've said this in the ninth year, we are looking for an administrator. A qualified administrator. Um, what do you call it? Agbat has gone to so many places and um, uh, our my sister is so good at coordinating it. A lot of responses are that by next week we should begin to get them you know, to be interviewed. Praise God. By the way, some of you, Mr. Kevin, you've been part of the interview panel. But for that office and the ministry, we want a qualified person. Somebody who can deliver. Somebody when it comes to IT, when it comes to things to do, because the world is a global village person. Everything we do. I was talking to uh, the man coordinating our work, you know, um, in the United States because this ministry I told you was registered in the US. And we were talking, I said, for any time I come around, be able to hold meeting with them and things like that. But now, if Corona has not allowed people to travel, said so yes, we must not be stagnant. Or tell someone that said look, we must start an online fellowship. To minister to you people, amen, and carry you along with what God is doing in this ministry. That now, look for a convenient time at your end. We are going to adjust your time this time around because we want to host this, is to reach out to outside Nigeria. So that if I do videos for other ministries and churches, if I do conferences in from here, when they're having conferences, I still preach here. As you do videos you know, for people from here online, shout hallelujah. Praise God. And then we should be able to deliver in that area to impact lives. Now, we are thinking globally. We are trusting God for funds to be able to uh, invest funds into uh, information technology. Praise God. To be able to make impact because we are in the 11th hour.